Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrick. His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, chaired the weekly cabinet meeting remotely with the participation of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The Secretary General of the Cabinet, Dr. Yasser bin Isa Nasr, made the following statement. His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, praised the achievement of Bahraini workers and their role in further developing the kingdom. He commended the efforts of workers and their unions in enhancing the work environment under the reign of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. On the occasion of the World Press Freedom Day, His Royal Highness affirmed the full support of the government to press freedom for it is to perform its noble message, enlightening the public. The Premier then directed to submit the National Ambulance Performance Report. The cabinet then looked into a number of items on its agenda and uh, took the following decisions. In an effort to execute the directives of His Royal Highness the Premier and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince to increase the scope of the beneficiaries from the financial and economic stimulus, the cabinet approved supporting 950 taxis and buses by up to 300 Bahrain dinars per month until June, along with 829 driving trainers and 422 kindergarten workers, including 102 who do not have social insurance. The cabinet approved a draft law to build the Mohammed bin Mbarak Al Khalifa Academy for diplomatic studies, according to which the academy's board would be appointed under the leadership of the Minister of Foreign Affairs and with the membership of six affiliates of the ministry. The cabinet approved uh, revising the law number 40 of the year 1999, according to which the citizens of the GCC countries may purchase real estate properties to include mechanisms to allow for passing property through inheritance. The cabinet followed up on the progress of 96 development projects which are worth around 311 million dinars, 15 of which are in the field of infrastructure at the cost of 129 million dinars, 49 in health at 11 million dinars and 32 in construction at 64 million dinars. The Cabinet approved a Memorandum of Understanding between the National Committee for International Humanitarian Law and its counterpart from Egypt in order to facilitate further cooperation in the fields of education and military affairs. The Cabinet approved a recommendation by the Council of Representatives on the services of the Ministry of Labour and Social Development, which will be facilitated electronically. The Cabinet approved a recommendation to build emergency centres in all governance. The cabinet approved a recommendation to increase the capacity of the Jidhaf Secondary School for boys. The cabinet approved a recommendation to grant housing units to athletes from the national football team who have won the Gulf Cup. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa has received a phone call from Sri Lanka's Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa. The two premiers discussed bilateral relations and ways to enhance them in various areas. His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, affirmed the importance of joint action and international solidarity in confronting the spread of the coronavirus pandemic across the world. He stressed Bahrain's support for the efforts exerted by Sri Lanka in addressing the threat of uh, this pandemic, wishing the country and its people lasting safety and wellness. His Royal Highness praised Bahrain's close ties with Sri Lanka and the steadily expanding cooperation between them and lauded the contributions of the Sri Lankan community to the kingdom's growth and development. Prime Minister Rajapaksa expressed his deep appreciation to His Royal Highness Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa for the care and support provided by Bahrain's government, the Sri Lankan community and the kingdom. He also lauded the precautionary measures taken by Bahrain to protect Sri Lankans and provide them with the necessary medical care and treatment which reflects the kingdom's faith in, in them and its adherence to the noble human values that unite the people across the world. Prime Minister Rajab Paksa lauded Bahrain's successes in dealing with the coronavirus pandemic and wished the kingdom and its people more well-being and further progress. The first deputy president of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Bahrain Olympic Committee, president and chairman of the Coordination and Execution uh, Committee, is uh, Tijaba at the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, chaired the weekly meeting of, committee of the committee remotely to discuss means of further developing the sector of sports and youth in the kingdom. The meeting was attended by the Minister of Education, Majid Naimi, the Minister of Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning, Aysam Al Khalaf, the Minister of uh, Youth and 
and Sports Affairs, Ayman Al Muayyad, the President of the Civil Service Bureau, Ahmed Al Zayed, and the representative of the Legislative and Legal Opinion Commission, as well as members of the Istijaba Committee. His Highness Sheikh Khalid expressed pleasure with the efforts exerted to implement projects that would maintain sustainable development in line with the goals of the reform project of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the government's plan led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, as well as the vision of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Serving Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Highness discussed a number of projects aimed at developing the youth and sports sector in line with the vision of the representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs National Security Advisor and Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The Minister of Labor and Social Development, Jamil Hamaidan, announced that the enterprises of the private sector have started to issue salaries for their Bahraini employees who are registered with the social insurance organization for the months of April, May and June of this year. The announcement comes in line with the directives of His Majesty the King to stimulate the economy through a number of economic and financial measures in support of the citizens and the private sector in light of the outbreak of the pandemic and its effects on the economy. It is also in line with the government's commitment as per the Royal Directive directives to pay the salaries of the employees of the private sector. The minister said that the vast majority of the employees received their salaries in April in a swift manner as the ministry is working to tackle any administrative challenges that may arise in this area. Hamidan added that the stimulus funds have already been deposited to the accounts of various enterprises of the private sector thanks to the comprehensive database on the labor force that the kingdom enjoys. The international COVID-19 webinar has recommended to document the Bahraini model of dealing with the coronavirus on international scientific platforms. The infectious diseases consultant and microbiologist at the BDF hospital and member of the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus, Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Manaf al ghahtani highlighted that the Bahraini model was presented during the webinar and that the latest development related to the virus were discussed, including means of identifying target genes for examination, as well as research for drug therapy and treatment methods for patients in intensive care. The webinar was held under the patronage of the chairman of both the Supreme Council for Health and the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus, Lieutenant General Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa. Over 600 medical professionals from the United States, Holland, the United Kingdom and Italy participated in the webinar. The Ambassadors of the Nation program launched by the Bahrain Institute for Political Development, the BIPD, to raise political awareness among overseas students will uh, feature six lectures this year. The program uh, to be held in cooperation with the Mohammed bin Barak Al Khalifa Academy for Diplomatic Studies will be online due to the measures taken by Bahrain to mitigate the spread of the coronavirus. The program will run from April 29th until May 17th and students can register on www.bipd.org. In our international news, the General Directorate of the Affairs of the Holy Mosque of Saudi Arabia has carried out a series of precautionary measures including social distancing to keep worshippers from praying closely to one another during the performance of the Taraweeh prayers at the Holy Mosque. The application of the precautionary measures comes as a part of the Kingdom's efforts to contain the outbreak and to prevent it from reaching those who work to maintain the Holy Mosque. Following the decision of the custodian of the two Holy Mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, to allow the Taraweeh prayers to take place. The Holy Mosque is experiencing a number of other precautionary measures which include the intensification of the sanitization process throughout the day in order to prevent the spread of the coronavirus COVID-19. The British Prime Minister Boris Johnson planned to be back at his desk on Monday at 10 Downing Street after a bout with a coronavirus that put him in intensive care. A van believed to be carrying Johnson was seen arriving at the Prime Minister's office in London on Sunday, two weeks after he was released from a London hospital. Here is Yasmin Ibrahim with the latest business news. Thank you, Sarah.
A very good evening. You're watching the Business News on Bahrain International with me, Yasmin Ibrahim. Bahrain All Share Index has closed at 1,302.14 points, marking a decrease of 5.45 points below the previous closing. This decrease was due to the fall in the commercial bank sector. 83 equity transactions took place with a volume of 7,176,957 worth 1,035,994 Bahraini dinars. Investors traded mainly in the commercial bank sector, representing 60.22% of the total value of securities traded. Experts have welcomed a royal decree to partially lift the coronavirus curfew across Saudi Arabia, saying it will revive business activity and increase consumption. Saudi Arabia's main stock exchange reacted positively to the decree to climb 3.54%. Seven companies reached the daily limit of 10%. 194 companies closed up and only one company closed down. Construction companies and factories are allowed to resume their activities without restrictions on time. Wholesale and retail trade stores as well as commercial centers and malls are also reopening. Egypt is seeking an aid package from the International Monetary Fund to offset the impact of the pandemic. In a televised press conference with the central bank governor and other ministers, Egypt did not specify the size of the one-year financial aid package the government was seeking. The impact of the virus has been severe for Egypt. Foreign reserves dropped from 45.5 billion US dollars in February to 40.1 billion US dollars at the end of March. Japan's central bank is making it easier for cash-strapped companies to get funding in response to the growing economy devastation from the pandemic. The Bank of Japan decided at a meeting today to ease monetary policy, including expanding the purchase of commercial papers and corporate bonds, which work to deliver cash to companies. In a move that was widely expected, the central bank also decided to remove the ceiling on its purchase of government bonds. It already has been purchasing trillions of yen worth of government bonds to counter deflation. Stocks restarted production at its auto plants in Czech Republic today after the country's far-reaching lockdown was eased. Employees arriving for work at the manufacturer's plant received face masks and other protective gear. Security staff performed random temperature checks on the workers as they passed through the entrance gates. Due to the pandemic, Skoda Auto hailed, halted production operations at all three of its Czech plants on the 18th of March. Employees received 70% of their salary from March 18 to March 29. After after which the sum was increased to 75%. And finally, before we conclude our business news for this evening, let's take a look at how stock markets around the world fare in daily trading. That is it from the business desk. It's back to you, Sarah. Thank you, Ismin. Trash becomes treasure. Treasure fit for a virus pandemic. A Hong Kong upcycler is turning household waste into face masks and goggles amid the battle against the coronavirus. Fong Yi Kang is a children's games designer and amateur upcycler who is turning rubbish into protective gear. Milk cartons become masks while a single-use plastic sandwich box becomes a pair of goggles. None of the items are scientifically proven to protect wearers, but with a shortage of proper protective equipment, his designs are drawing the public's attention.